Hello, everybody. My name is Oliver G. This is the Earful Tower podcast, and I think it's time we talk about wine. Wine in Paris, where to drink it, how to drink it. Wine outside of Paris, where to drink it, how to drink it. What does it taste like? All these questions answered by today's expert, which is Tanisha Townsend, who is sitting in front of me right now. Tanisha, welcome to the studio. I'm finally here. You Hi. are finally here. It's taken a while, though we did it the... We went the weird way about it. Video first. Video first. What's all that about? On a beautiful balcony in front of the Eiffel Tower. Wasn't sponsored by anyone, but we can say it was Paris Perfect. They uh, hooked us up with a... Well, we did like a blind wine. <laughs> you know what my big <laughs> takeaway was? That Lena, my wife, didn't know the blindfolded if she was drinking red or white wine. You know, it's really hard to figure that out. Yeah. If you're blindfolded, you do not know white or red. I mean, I do because I'm the expert. That's why I'm here. I think but that people listening would, would think that they certainly would know. They certainly would not. Why is that? Because the flavors can be the same. Right. So, I mean, when you see it clearly, you know. But then when you taste it, all you're tasting is fruit. So you're not sure if it's the fruit from a red wine or the fruit from a white wine. I bet, be the, um, I bet the temperature also is a giveaway for people. It might be, but if you chill them both, then well. I like it. See, this tells me already that, uh, that wine isn't just about smelling and uh, tasting. It's about vision. It's about vision. Um, also, when it comes to tasting, it's not just like the flavor. It's also the mouthfeel. How does it feel in your mouth? Which sounds weird to be having a discussion about. It. Yeah. Especially during the morning on a <laughs> Wednesday or Tuesday, whatever it is. But yeah, how it feels in your mouth. Is it heavy? Is it light? Is it soft? Is it rough? Like that also has a lot to do with what it is. I think um, I want to... Because I... Uh, There'll be people maybe thinking I was picking on my wife then. It's just that I know so little about food and drink in general, and she's quite good with that kind of stuff. So for, for me, it was a big victory to win one of those rounds. Uh, but I do admit that I'm, a, I'm the idiot in the room when it comes to wine. I think it would be, kind of would be fun to rectify that in 25 minutes if possible. Okay. Uh, <laughs> possible? <laughs> I mean, I got my work cut out for me. Yeah, but challenge accepted. But I also want to talk about you and what you do and uh, – and, uh, you know, like uh, you, you do sort of wine to – we were talking about this before we pressed record and you sort of have a modern take on the wine tasting, which kind of to me when people say wine tasting, I think stuffy rooms, some old guy telling me what I should be seeking in the taste and stuff like that. Yes. and Was that, that is, due for a change? That is one way to go about it. That is not the way I go about it. I take people to wine bars. And I want them to have practical knowledge when they leave. I want them to leave my tasting and be able to give you one or two sentences about the wine they had or a wine that they really enjoy. Because that way they can take that information and use that again and again. They can go into another wine bar. They can go into a restaurant. They can go into a wine shop and they can like they can describe the wine that they want. So whatever wine that we have, I always ask them at the end after we talk through it, like, OK, if you want to get this wine again, how would you describe it? Mm. And then I help them work through that description because so many people feel so uncomfortable when uh, the bartender, the waiter or they're at a wine shop and the person is like, oh, OK, well, what are you looking for? They're like, uh, I want a wine yeah, with a uh, fruit in it. I'm like, you have narrowed it down. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, help. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I feel like that. I had a glass of wine last night. Mm -hmm. And the guy says, what do you want? And I said, fruity. Do you know why I said fruity? Because I panicked. I didn't even know what I want. I didn't even know what I wanted. I just, you know what I wanted? I wanted something cold. That's what I wanted. You wanted a beer, Oliver. <laughs> no, I didn't want a beer. I wanted wine. I felt like a, beers are too big. You know? They can be. I yeah. wanted a nice wine that was cold. And I, I didn't really know. And I panicked. Okay. Can we do a little like therapy session first? Yes. Like, can you just help me out with that order, what I should be getting? Okay. So you want cold. In thinking cold, you probably don't necessarily want fruity. Or if you do want fruity, you want more citrus fruit. Because with citrus fruit, thinking orange, lemon, lime, grapefruit, that citrus is going to come across as um, like tart or more acidic. And that will also give you the sensation that it is colder yeah, like or like a, fresh. Like, like a slice of lemon in my Coca-Cola. Absolutely. Right. That. Also, um, uh, minerality, which 
people argue about that word, but think of like um, stony, chalky, um, how it smells after it rains, like mm. how like the ground smells, like you will get characteristics of that in wine that will also come across as it will make it seem colder mm. as opposed to something that is maybe more apple or red fruit that comes across as fruity mm. whereas what you want it cold you probably want it more of a sensation of citrus mm. and like that tartness do you teach people how to say it in french as well or are you just doing english thing? i have done it in french because i have to do it to the waiter usually yeah. in french yeah what do you think i should have said to him last night um probably plus acid un peu léger. yeah so like you want it soft and then more acid Gosh. and do you think like in general i was just at a very typical bistro kind of place in the 12th hour this month, very <laughs> nondescript. Do you think that waiter would have been able to fulfill the request in general? Yes. How come? Because most places will have something like what you asked for. Usually it's going to be in the form of a Sauvignon Blanc, so a sans Um Now, if you want to start going more deeper and getting into more, I hate to say random, but more, um, if you want different grapes, then... The bistro probably wouldn't have that. No. But if you want something um, citrus or if you want something a little more full bodied as a white wine, they will have that for you. I got a question for you. When yes. you go and you just fancy a glass of wine somewhere, how many different like variables, like how many different wines do you think you could request that you would actually want to drink? Do you get what I mean? Like if I go to I, I hate to I hate to say this, but if I go to McDonald's. <laughs> Right, I know. Listen, that I like McDonald's, so I know, but it makes me seem so we are in a safe place. It sounds uncouth okay. in a wine conversation, but I know at McDonald's, I've visited McDonald's my whole life, right? I know that there's basically three or four things I want there, mm -hmm. max, and I don't really stray from that. So, how many things are there that you would ask for in a year? Oh, in a year, yeah. Well, but is it like two or three always, or is it like seven hundred? Probably closer to 700. No okay, way. Okay, maybe not 700. But like maybe 10 white yeah. and red things that I know are good every time. Really? Now, veering off and say we're going to natural wine, then I never know what I want and I just let them pick for me. What's the deal with natural wine? How much time do we have? We have one minute for that. <laughs> <laughs> so natural wine is just... It's weird to say, like, it's natural. It's nothing added, nothing taken away. Right. So it's no extra yeast added. It's no um, acidification, no extra sugar added. And then in the end, it's nothing taken away. They don't find it. They don't clarify it. They don't do anything. They just let it be, and then they put it in a bottle. Right. Problem with that is, and problem, put that in quotes. Sometimes I need the chemicals. Right. Not me, but just to make the wine more stable, to right. make it um, look the way we're used to wine looking. Um, most natural wine is a little cloudy in the glass, and uh, some people just want to see a wine that is clear. You yeah. don't want to look like you poured something, like there's dust in the wine and they just swirled it around. Like that's not the look you're necessarily going for. Also, I don't feel like the flavor is always... Um, indicative of the grape. Mm. Like I can't blind taste a natural wine right. and figure out what it is. So they, you know, those, um, you've seen, I'm sure you've seen those videos where someone like the pro, the ultimate pro smells. Oh, I've gone to those competitions yeah. and watched them. They had the best sommelier in the world competition here last year or year before last. Right. Maybe it was last year. And so I went and watched that. It was so intense. Yeah. They brought out the wines. There were four of them. And then they had to figure out what they were, what the grape was, what the region was, maybe the producer, yeah. and then the year. And then to top that off, after they finished with the four, they brought out two rocks. And they were like, okay. Two rocks? Two rocks. Yeah. And they were like, all right, which rock goes with which wine? What? I was like. What do you mean rock? Like a, like a round stone? Like a round stone. They brought out a piece of rock. Okay. And I think it was like schist and like maybe limestone. <laughs> oh, I was like, it, what the in rock? the world? What happened? And so they were like, okay, let's go back and taste these. You can actually taste stone in wine. And that's kind of what I meant earlier when I said minerality. So what the vines grow in grow up through and all of that some of that flavor is imparted to the wine so they go so these guys go okay 
they, they took a look at the rock. Mm-hmm. They touch it, sniff it, anything like that? All of those things. Are you things. kidding? They t- t- put their tongue on it? No. <laughs> so they looked at it. I, I would probably have to, but That's yeah. That's fascinating to me. That's How did that what not I make it thought. onto social media? And it's on, the video was on YouTube from the whole thing. I play it in classes now. I'm like, guys, look at this. Wow, that's really something. It was fascinating. It goes so deep. It shows that I'm uh, hardly scraping the surface with my... Uh, yeah. And also, I'm not sure I want to know wine like that because if I know intimate, it... It's a bit intimate, isn't it? It is. And I feel like if you know it like that, then uh, can you really share it with other people that are just, you know, just learning? It also, I feel like it makes it hard to just have a nice glass of wine with a friend if you're thinking about licking the rock that it came from. That part, you can't just enjoy it. You're swirling it, sifting it like, yeah. I get hints of, I'm like, I'm just with my girlfriends. Yeah. I just want to have yeah. this glass and you know not worry it, yeah. if it's apple or pear. <laughs> like, whatever. It, remind, it reminds me of, they say, you. it's really hard to watch a movie with a um, with like a special effects expert or something because they watch it and they go, well, that's not a real explosion, <laughs> is it? Be like, where there's a hole in the plot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you be quiet, please? Yeah, exactly. Just let me enjoy my fantasy land. Before we get into the wine tours that you do in Paris and beyond, there's something we chatted about before. You're like a triple threat of minorities. Yes. I'm curious about this um, because I want to know if it's a big deal for you, if it's something that you, um, like if it's something that's your strength or if it's something you just push to the side and get on with. Uh, A little of both. Um, I look at it in the beginning um, I didn't pay that much attention to it because I was like, no, I'm just really good at what I do. So it'll be fine. But as time went on, I started realizing like, OK, um, I'm American. I know you all didn't know that because my accent. Clearly. Let's get let's, let's tackle this. You're from you're Chicago, right? From Chicago, okay. South Side. What does South Side mean? It just a, it's, I get I get the it's logistics. a north and a west and then a south. It's not really an east side, uh-huh. but South Side. And what is for people like me? What is, is South Side good side, bad side? I mean, of course, I'm going to say it's a good side. Okay, it's just different, different neighborhoods. Yeah, where would just you most Chicago likely split? to have bumped into Michael Jordan in the '90s? South Side, downtown, downtown, downtown or North Side? Did you ever bump into him? No, never. Okay. Well, okay. Next anecdote. Okay. <laughs> so you're American. <laughs> that Ameri- would have been fun. <laughs> you're yes. American, and that's uh, America, and then also the Chicago part, and especially the South Side part. Um, I bring that up just because that isn't something that you would think about. Like, oh yeah, so she grew up around wine, or she knew wine. It's not like I grew up in like Napa or Sonoma, right. or just anywhere in California, yeah, sure. or Finger Lakes around New York, or anything like that. I didn't come into wine until later, later in adult life. And I say later, later, because I was in grad school. And I was like, this is hard. I should drink. And so that's So you how. got into wine in the States before you came to mm-hmm. Paris? Before I came to And how long Paris. have you been in Paris? Been, it'll be 10 years this fall. It's about the same as me. Man. Yeah, we should have, we can do a joint party. I was You do the wine, I'll do, do the party. podcast. Eh? Done. <laughs> I'm sorry, did they hear that? Done. <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, so... I didn't really think about it at first, but as time went on, I started like people would say certain things. I think I didn't think about it or it didn't really affect me at first because when I first got here, I didn't speak French. Mm. And so people would say things about me and I didn't understand what they were saying. Mm. So they probably were talking about me and I just didn't get it. There's there's, there's something good about that. Absolutely. I, I quite like it worked in my favor yeah. because it didn't bother me. What yeah. people say about me that I don't understand yeah. or that isn't said directly to me, I mean, I'm not gonna worry about that. I love it. I think I think that's you know when some even today, I assume you speak pretty good French, I speak pretty good French, but if some person walks past and mutters something, maybe about me or not, and you don't hear it, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? And I actually think that is so clutch because people now with social media and everything people say so much people everybody has a voice that is a good thing and a bad thing and so some stuff people just say i'm like oh well i don't get that so yeah yeah Yeah. moving right it's an it can be an advantage okay moving right yeah 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 and like i was saying before i go for people who go for me yeah i'm not going to try to force you to like me Mm. i'm not trying to kick this door down you need to like me Mm. and uh, no, you like me or you don't. Yeah. Yeah, great. Great. And so how about being a woman? That's the second minority for people counting in along. Fr- <laughs> in in terms of in terms of In terms of, yeah, in terms of. Mostly dudes doing this. Mostly job. dudes and mostly old dudes. Yeah. Um mostly white dudes. Mostly, white old dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um uh, they look at me crazy sometimes. Do they really? Do you get on with them? What what's the I do um, now. I think what has really happened for me 
is. I network a lot. I'm at a lot of wine events, a lot of wine tastings. I go to conferences and they see me so often. They're like, okay, she must be serious or they saw me with someone that they know. So it's kind of like I got a co-sign from that person. Right. And so that helped me out a lot. That helped me out and is helping me out a lot by just knowing um, people. Yeah. And showing up. And showing up. Yeah. If you don't get anything else from this podcast, which I mean, I hope you do, because we are talking about wine, yeah. um, show up. Yeah. Show, sometimes it is just showing up over and over and over again. Mm. Mm. So show up at the wine shop. Mm. And what about uh, how many black people are doing wine in Paris? Oh, it's not that many. I'm starting to know more because um, I actively look for them. But yeah, it's still not that many. Um I don't know why that is the case here. I think um, there may be a few factors uh, that come into play with that, that um, that seems like more. If you get into wine, usually you start in a restaurant. And so that's more service and people aren't necessarily interested in service jobs or they get stuck in the service part and never get to the wine part. Yeah. Um, and then also I know, cause since we're in France, we're talking largely like, uh, we're talking black, we're talking an African population. Uh, I think religion has a lot to do with it too. And a lot of them yeah, are Muslim. Right. Yeah, and so sure. then there is no drinking there. Interesting. So Interesting. I think that plays into it. But you don't, uh, that I see, you, you don't push that, uh, triple threat of minorities as your sort of business card. I don't because when... A lot of times... When hey, wait, people, can I just say something? When yes. I say triple threat, it sounds like a negative word. I'm using the basketball Oh, no, you're sense. using it in the, the best sense of the word. I think okay. triple threat. I think Chicago Bulls, three people. That's exactly like, what I was thinking. <laughs> all those That's exactly what I was thinking. Good. One same page. <laughs> triple threat. No, I was all on board for it. Cool. Sorry, these braces are making so much noise. That's all right. It's, it's just like a wine. Right. Uh, it a is. podcast is sound. People are visualizing the bracelets. Now they're on the table. Right. Okay. Now they're on the table because so, I'm moving my hands. So it's not your calling card. It's uh, no, it's not my calling card because when uh, a lot of times when people try to push that and be like, oh, well, what about this? And then that's all they talk about. Mm. I'm like, just let me be the expert that I yeah, am cool. and not me just have this conversation about diversity or mm. mixing or anything like that. Just mm. let me be the diversity. Perfect. Let me speak about what I speak about. And then, I mean, everything else will fall into place. Perfect. Well, let's get onto the wine bars and what you do. Yes. You're not sitting in some dusty old... I actually like the dusty old caves. I do like a car from time to time. Yeah, yeah. What do you say in English? It's not It's not cave, is it? You can't say cave. I'll come take you into the cave for some wine tasting. Cellar? Cellar. Cellar. Yeah. I didn't even know the word. Yeah. I was I like, what is... Well. What is the English word? Because I speak French yeah. now. So, so what so is the English word? Yes. But you're, uh, you're more about going to cool new places. and Cool new places, trying out wine bars, taking people to wine bars, just so they can... Um, I just want them to be able to put what they learn into practice, mm. like, immediately. So can you I'll walk s- me through what, what one of your um, wine tours is like? Sure. I will have them meet me. Um, usually people take taxis now, which... That's a conversation for another day. <laughs> so they just show up right at the wine bar, right. depending on which one we go to. Yeah. Um, I'll have a table already there and then um, just kind of talk to them a little bit about my background, because that is a question they ask. Yeah. And then I'll order sparkling wine. I like to start with sparkling wine because people don't drink sparkling wine enough. Mm. People think sparkling wine is just for um, celebrations, just for parties or graduations or weddings and i'm like no it's tuesday we made it Mm. let's let's toast it up (laughs) let's toast it up you're in paris let's cheers chin chin and so we do that i talk them through uh, some flavors i have an aroma wheel that i bring out so we can speak specifically to what do you taste what do you smell then we'll talk a little more, and then we'll go through um, another wine. Depending on where we are, I might order food there. Uh, if I don't order food there, then we will go to another place, and then we'll get another wine, and then order food there, and then really get into the conversation. Depending on the group, we either do two or three places. Yeah. And why it depends, some people get to the second place and we love it here, we're staying. Yeah. Okay. Because I imagine they're not spitting out the wine that they're tasting. They're spitting nothing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, since this is wine bars, we're doing full glasses. Right. You know, if you do a tasting, you do just a tasting. Yeah. So it's tasting pour. And are these private groups or is it like semi-private? Private groups, okay. all private. Okay. Yeah. I used to do uh, groups and have those featured on websites and things like that, but that just never worked. So yeah. now all private all the time. You know what? I get the sense from you because uh, we do similar things a little bit. I do walking tours, which mm -hmm. people come and I show them around. But I get the sense that you, if people said to you, oh, this is cool, we want to stay in this bar, that you'd be like, this is awesome, I'll stay with you, you guys are fun, I'm having fun. Whereas if people on my tour said, we'll finish here, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I would say, no, 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 we'll finish the tour that I scripted. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, because yours is more, um, like you just said, scripted in the sense of there is there are other places for you to show them. Right, right, right. What I would show them in another bar, they could essentially get at the one yeah, bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, I think you might be more fun than I am. I think you're... You, you maybe feel not me, myself. It. Maybe it's the wine Oh, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Because after a few glasses, they get a little... The conversation from the beginning to the end is a little different. What about the professionalism of it? Are you drinking as well? I'm not. Okay, I was going to say, because after like three or four glasses or whatever you have, it might be hard to hit that finish line and go, I got to go. To hit the finish line, to make sense, to make sure they're safe, to yeah. move around, to yeah. still keep um, uh, myself together. And also, if I'm doing two or three tastings a week, I can't drink with them like that. True. Like, what about my liver? Yeah, true. What about my kidneys? But do you taste it a little bit? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I will taste... If I drink with them at all, it will be the first one. It would be the sparkling. Yeah. And then I still don't even drink that. Like, I'll just taste that, um, take a sip of that. Yeah. And that's it. Because I can't, the other three, I know what those taste like. I yeah. know what those smell sure. like. So I can still talk them through it at this what point. What about some, um, you, now you live in the trendy canal area. Yeah. Does that mean you keep the tour around there? I don't, not at all. No. Mm -mm. I don't I do, gonna say I don't do trendy... a tour in my um, neighborhood. Really? Mm -mm. Well, how do you pick which neighborhood to do? I pick which neighborhood based on uh, bars proximity to each other. Yeah. I need at least three bars that I can walk to within five to seven minutes. Yeah. Because once people start drinking, they're not trying to walk 15 minutes to no, another bar. No, of course. Bar. Of course. Also, I'm largely dealing with Americans who aren't used to walking. Sure. So we need to keep it close. Yeah. And we need to keep it together. Yeah. And so that's what I do. But so. do you always do the same uh, tour? Or if people are like, hey, I'm in the... Um I don't know, we're staying in a hotel on the 16th. Do you go, oh, I'll come out to the 16th then? No, I do it in the same. I have four, three or four neighborhoods. So now. you're like a regular at these, at these places. Mm -hmm. Can you drop some names of some places that, uh, that everyone should go and visit? A few. The, the reason I hesitate, the reason I hesitated is sometimes I'm like, oh, I love this bar so much. I want everybody to know. But then yeah. I'm like, wait, I also want to be able to get in when I go. That's so I'm like, I got to keep it a secret. That's the precarious it uh, zone I live in. I live in this space that you're talking about. <laughs> I'm like, I want you to succeed and I want you to yeah. do well and go viral. Yeah. But then I need to come in here. Yeah. And I know this happens to you often. But every now and then I'll be out at a wine bar or somewhere and it's like, oh, excuse me. Are you? Yeah. Are you girl meets glass? Yeah. I'm like, hi. Now I can't act the way I want to act. I'm like, oh, just one glass. Do you know what I did for that? Mm -hmm. I've got places like uh, Le Peloton Cafe. Mm -hmm. Always talk about it. Always there. If people want to find me, they know that. People come looking for me there. And then my other regular spots I've never mentioned. Okay. So I can sit there and... Uh, you know, meet someone like you and have a chat. I'm going to ask for those after we <laughs> turn <laughs> but, off the recording. But what about, uh, you can give us some. Okay, some places that I really enjoy. Um, Freddy's. I think that's the sixth off of Rue de Seine. That's either five or six near Odeon. Right. Um, Freddy's is fantastic. Um, it's a place called La Bascule. It looks a little divey. It's in Montmartre. It looks a little divey, but their wine selection is amazing. Yeah. And Le Vent Comptoir, everybody knows about this place. So it's not like I'm giving a secret. They have three locations. I like the big location, the one in the covered market, because they have seats there. Which covered Sienna. market? Which one? The Saint Germain covered market. Ah, oh, yeah. It's an Apple store over there, yeah, yeah, a yeah. Uniqlo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one, um, that butter, they give you bread if you order food and drink or whatever. And then they have this big mound of butter that you just kind of scoop off of. 
and then take that. I love that you're the reason you're recommending a wine bar is the butter. <laughs> I mean, the wine clearly, yeah. but also as an added, the butter, yeah. the salted butter is chef's kiss. Oh, wow. I mean, even though a chef didn't do that, that was cow's. But wow. Yeah, chef's kiss. Um, Autour de Vent, which I really like. It's near Gardenor. So if people are catching the Eurostar or they're just around that area, I think that's the ninth. You really take us all over town right now. It's yeah. great. Yeah. How do you know? That's even us four. Can you give us one more? Or am I pushing my luck? No, you're not. I'm trying to think of one other place. Another place that's um, actually kind of new uh, went there last week. It's called Juicy Cove. It's natural and it's um, in the 10th, not far from the canal. Okay, perfect. And so I, I I'll really be like that I'll sharing those addresses with everybody uh, as well as links to, to your stuff. I'm curious about when you go, like when you're out looking, let's say you haven't read something online, you're just looking for a, a cool place to have a glass of wine. When you walk into an establishment, how quickly do you know if it's got a good selection? Like what's the telltale signs? I know pretty quickly. I will ask if they have um, – sometimes I look at the menu because, you know, people have the menu outside. I'll look at the menu, kind of see what they have. I'll see what the seating is like. A lot of times um, if I'm looking to just have a glass of wine, I don't want to go into like the wine bar restaurant mm. where I know I have to order food. Mm. Um, I just want a place that has – you know, the small tables with the high chairs. I know that's going to be a place I can just go in and get a glass right. and then leave. So yeah. I can tell by the way it looks. Wow. Um, if they have. Never thought about that. If they have the glasses and the napkins and the forks out, the yeah. fork and knife yeah. out, I'm like, no. I'm but is there like a wine that if you walk in and you say, hey, do you have X, Y, Z? And they say yes, you go, oh, yeah, I want something <laughs> good. Like the secret wine. No, because places are so different here based on what they have. Uh, depends on where the owner is from. Uh, depends on what the owner likes. Like some owners are from, say they're from the South and they're from the Rhone Valley. So they will have a lot of wines from the Rhone Valley. Mm. They're from Burgundy or from North. They will have a lot of wines from that area. So it all depends. Can I ask you a, a question that has a half an hour answer? Okay. I'll but try you to give answer the half in. a minute answer. Okay. 30 Why? minutes to 30 seconds. <laughs> Why do you like wine so much? I think it's going to take me 30 minutes to figure it out, Um, (laughs) to give like a concise answer. I enjoy wine so much because when I came to know about wine, I came to know it from the taste. But then as I learned about it, understanding how it's made, how it depends on the soil and the sunlight and the rainfall and the slope of the land, not even so much winemaker intervention, but with all of those other things that go into it to get you this bottle in this glass, all of that is fascinating to me. It's not like orange juice where orange juice is going to taste the same if I get orange from Australia versus mm. California versus Chile. If I get a Cabernet Sauvignon from Bordeaux, from California, from Chile, they will taste different. Mm. And then if I get one next year, then that will taste different than the year before. Mm. That is so fascinating to me. A lot of depth. Yes. Yeah. Do you have the same approach to food? Some food. Yeah. I mean, of course, I have it to cheese now because we're in France. Sure. And if you don't like cheese, then, well, something wrong with you. Yeah. In this country. I'm not saying you yourself. No, no, no. Do you drink, do you drink beer? I do, yeah, but I don't like beer across the board. I oh. just like blonde or blanche. And what's your favorite? What's your go-to wine? Go-to wine. If it's white and I'm out somewhere, Chenin Blanc. So Chenin Blanc from the Loire Valley. If it's red, and this also is for the listeners too, when they're just like, I don't know what I want to order. I just want to wait. A Cote de Rhone is going to work every time. I'm glad you said that because I just had a flashback to about Eight years ago on this podcast, I had a French lady. She was a comedian. But she said to me, she, she was like, if you want to just seem a little bit more sophisticated, order Côte de Rhone and not Bordeaux. Yes. And I think I've been doing that for eight years. Just, <laughs> it works. But I might do the same for wine. What did you say? Chenin, Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because uh, also- otherwise people will say Sancerre and then they'll be like, oh, are you American? So like. Interesting. No, don't do that. Do a Chenin Blanc. Well, I propose two things. I propose you say the best place for people to follow you online and find out more about your stuff. What's that? That would be social media, Instagram, girl meets glass. Yep. And for Australia listeners, that's glass. 
Thank you. <laughs> gloss. gloss. Can you do Australian accent? That's gl- oh, you don't want to. You don't want to hear I that. I kind of do. You don't want to hear that. Girl meets glass. Here. Girl meets glass on Instagram. <laughs> Search Tanisha Townsend. I'll put links down below. Uh, and I would like to come on one of your tours. So I'm going to come yes. and. Uh, Come and drink at a wine bar with me. No, I'd like. I think that'd be really fun. So we'll schedule that in. I'll try not to get you drunk. I don't mind. It's all right if it's for work. If it's part of it's research. Research. I love it. No, I'd love to come and do that. I think that'd be really fun. So that's something. uh, I'll take lots of pictures and we'll make an evening out of it. Yes. Uh, But uh, there's lots more to talk about. So we'll have to have you back on the show at some point. Oh, we're done. Yeah. Time run. Look, thirty minutes has already passed. What? Yeah. I told you to go quick. All right. Is there something that you wanted to say that you didn't get a chance to? I mean, I always have things to say. Well, that just means know. we need to have a part two. Part two. Part two. Part two on location. That's what I like to hear. Yes, Tanisha, literally. thank you for coming on the Eiffel Tower. And uh, thanks for teaching me so much about wine. Thank you. It and, was a pleasure. Well, the pleasure was mine. And I'll just round things out by saying, uh, if you want to find Tanisha, Girl Meets Glass is the name of the social media. I'll put links so you can find her tours in the show notes below. Uh, as for this podcast, The Earful Tower, if you enjoy it, if you want to get more from it, uh, become a Patreon supporter and keep these wheels spinning around. Patreon.com slash The Earful Tower. You probably noticed there's no ads on this episode. That's the only ad. Become a Patreon member and, of course, check out Tanisha for more about wine. Thanks for listening. I'll be back again next week with another episode. My name's Oliver G and this is The Earful Tower Podcast. <laughs>